Hey, hi, and howdy to all my sweet friends out there. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. I am Courtney and we are cooking up a storm today. I am sharing three meals I made for my family this week. These are awesome, delicious, simple, easy, affordable, and fall themed meals mostly. <laughs> I tried some new stuff this week and um, it was all fantastic. It was all a win and it really did kind of get me in that fall mood because these were all just such great meals. First off, we're gonna try some lumpia. I've never had this before that I know of and I've never made it before, but I gave it a shot this week and I gotta say like we really enjoyed it, but I would do one thing different and I'll get to that in a minute. So I started off by shredding up half a head of cabbage, dicing up a carrot, I've got some green onion, and then I showed you my ground pork there. I'm tossing in some green onions. I should mention that I'm linking the recipe below. I am having the recipe because I didn't need as many lumpia as the recipe was gonna make, so I just cut it in half. Um, I'm adding in some soy sauce, and then it called for some chicken bouillon, but I'm making some stir fry noodles, and I'm just using ramen noodles for that, so I just used one of the ramen seasoning packs in place of bouillon, just to kind of toss it in. I was afraid it would make it super salty, but it actually did not, not at all. It could have used a little bit more salt in the end. I threw in some of my confit garlic. You could do regular garlic or garlic powder. I've got some salt and some pepper. And then if you have some fresh cilantro, it's really great because it pops in here. I didn't happen to have any. So I just threw in some dried cilantro. Right there, I showed you my spring roll wrappers, which is what the recipe called for. And then I've got some hot water over next to me so that I can soak those for about 15 seconds to soften them up. Now, I did have like a most unfortunate event with these egg roll or the spring roll wrappers. The package got delivered to me from Walmart. So I don't know if it was in store or if it was in the delivery process, but um, all of the spring roll wrappers got damaged. Every single one of them was torn. Every single one of them had a hole in the middle, but I was still able to make it work. Um, I'll actually be showing you those in a minute. The first one I made, I thought it was just going to be the first one. I thought, well, first one's always a dud anyway, so no big deal. Um, I'll just work with it so I can practice, but it turned out it was every one. So I soaked it for about 15 seconds. It softens it right up, and then I took a nice big scoop of that meat filling that we made, and I filled this up, and then you're going to roll it up just like you would an egg roll. You can see there's a tear on the side where I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the pieces to meet together. And there's also a tear in the middle, which I was fully aware of, it rolled up pretty well though. So what I did was I just took one of the spring roll wrappers and got it wet and used it as a bandage for all of them. But I'm showing you here, like there's a tear in the middle, there's a tear on the side. You can see right there where I'm showing you, that is in every single one of them. So I just bandaged up every single one of them. You can see the um, extra I've got off to the side up there. I soaked it in water and I did have to re-soak it a couple of times because it did start to dry out as I finished rolling these, but I would just tear off a piece that's big enough to bandage that hole in the middle and just kind of plaster it on there. And this worked fantastically. Now, these were pretty challenging to work with because they're really delicate and they're kind of sticky. Um, I was following the recipe because it said spring roll wrappers, but I got to tell you guys, I would just do egg roll wrappers in the, in the future. I would not waste any time with these. It was good, but I, it would have been perfectly fine with egg roll wrappers. So that would be my suggestion moving forward just because it would be so much easier to work with. Um, these were fantastic though, tons of flavor. Kind of reminded me of like a, um, like a, a dumpling or something like that. Really, really good. And of course you're supposed to fry these. I did get a little nervous after I put a couple of them in. You can see them really start to inflate quite a bit because I had rolled them nice and tightly like it said to you. And I kind of started to get worried that they might explode. So I did go ahead and take a toothpick and poke just a tiny hole in them so that a little bit of the steam could escape without um, causing any kind of damage. And the ones where I forgot to poke a hole on, I could tell because the steam did not escape and it did pop a really, really big hole. So if you are using these spring roll wrappers, I recommend doing that. Egg roll wrappers will be fine. And like I said, I would just say use egg roll wrappers. They're so much easier to work with at the end of the day. But I just fried these on all of their sides. They were nice and brown and crispy. I did use my meat thermometer to make sure that the middle registered um, for fully cooked. This is ground pork and I can't remember what the temperature was now. Um, I just Googled it at the time but I did make sure that they were fully cooked before I pulled them out. Then of course I let them dry on a, a cooling rack set over some paper towels so that all the oil can drain off. And these are really good. The crispy outside and the soft inside, lots of great flavor, it was perfect. I'm showing you right there my ramen noodles and all I'm gonna do is add in some soy sauce, hoisin, garlic, onion powder, and a little bit of honey. You could do brown sugar if you don't have any honey. 
And then I threw in a package of frozen stir fry vegetables I had in my deep freeze and it was delicious. It was so easy. It was a great side. And it used up those veggies I've had in my freezer for a while. And it was really tasty. You can see right there, everything's all done. We each ate a couple of them. My son especially loved these because he's a huge fan of Asian inspired food. So he devoured all of the leftovers. <laughs> he loved it so much. Night number two, I made chicken and stuffing casserole. This is something I've made, and I think I even made it once before on my channel, but I'm kind of dressing it up a little bit. I really am starting to feel some of those fall vibes, even though I'm in Texas, because the temperature has started to drop a little bit. Like when I got up the other day, it was like 50 degrees outside. It was so nice. I'm loving it. I'm so ready for fall. Fall. Summer was brutal here in Texas, so I'm ready for a change of pace. So I've got a couple of chicken thighs here, and I'm just seasoning them with some Badia Complete. You'll see me using that a lot this week because I had it, and I don't really use it very often, and I, I need to use it. I mean, I bought it. I don't want to waste it. So this week I was really trying to use it on the stuff I cooked. It was one of those ingredients that I was like, okay, I need to make a mindful effort to use this up so it's not wasted. So I did decide to put it on my chicken, which turned out fantastic. I just seasoned one side and then I put it in the skillet and seasoned the other side. I did eventually find out on the next recipe. It's easier if I just flipped up the little pour side instead of using the shaker thing. I think some of the seasoning was getting caught in the little shaker hole, so this was taking forever. But on the next dish, I just poured it on it and that was so much easier. Now I cook this chicken until it got beautiful brown coloring on the outside. Color is flavor. That's exactly what we want. Um, this is a casserole and sometimes chicken can really not bring on the flavor if you're making a casserole and you're not careful but I developed beautiful color this chicken tasted amazing and then I just pulled it out and set it to the side and let it cool and then I just chopped it up into chunks so while it was cooling I went ahead and added some oil into my skillet there and we're going to throw in some fresh veggies I'm doing like really fall themed veggies I've got onion carrot and celery I'm feeling like the stuffing vibes and stuff like that and we are making some stuffing here so this is perfect this was like the best partner to that you could throw in some squash if you wanted to I think squash would be fantastic zucchini um probably even cauliflower I don't know about broccoli I feel like that one would kind of contrast some of the flavors in here but you could go nuts with veggies to really bulk this up I threw these in the skillet and I added a little butter for flavor as well and I just wanted to cook them until they were nice and soft you know carrots can take a little while so I wanted to make sure that these guys were definitely cooked especially by the time I was done because the casserole only has to really heat through for about 20 minutes I went ahead and threw a little little bit of that Badia Complete on here as well. Worked out beautifully. Lots of great flavor. It does lack in the salt department, so I need to be mindful of that in the future. Add a little bit of extra salt in there. There's my chopped up chicken. I threw that right back in the skillet. I've turned the heat off at this point. If your chicken was not fully cooked, you'd want to leave the heat on and let it cook in here with the veggies. Mine was. I cooked it plenty of time. Then we want to add some cream of soup. I'm going to let you pick whatever you want. Cream of celery, cream of chicken, cream of mushroom. It really doesn't matter. Whatever flavor profile you like works for this dish. I'm doing cream of celery because when I make my mom's dressing recipe, she always puts cream of celery soup in it. So I'm doing that here just so we have those vibes. And then I did add about half of a soup can of water in there just to kind of loosen it up because that condensed soup is pretty thick. And I wanted this to be nice and creamy. I then seasoned it with a little bit of fresh, uh, or not fresh, but some cracked black pepper and um, just let it kind of all come together there's some residual heat in the skillet even though the burner's off and that's perfect just to kind of help work it all together a little bit of that badia complete then i've got a casserole dish i sprayed it with some non-stick spray and we're pouring this creamy chicken veggie mixture into the bottom i'm going to smooth it out and make sure that it is all nice and flat in the bottom of this dish it is the base of our casserole um lots of great flavor i threw a little bit of parsley in there as well and i think i forgot to film that part but I'm just using a cheap box of the um, stuffing mix. It's just the generic of the stovetop stuffing. I mixed it with an extra quarter cup of water. So it is a little uh, wetter than usual, but that's perfect because I'm going to bake mine in the oven. I want the top to get crispy, but I don't want it to dry out if that makes any sense. That extra quarter cup of water really helps at the end of the day. So I went ahead and evenly dispersed it across the top of the casserole. I don't pat it down. I like it to have like the, the craggly look in the end because those are the crispy bits when you bake it. Technically, you really don't have to bake it. I mean, it is fully cooked. Everything is ready to go. I like to bake it just to kind of heat it all the way through again and to let the stuffing on top really kind of cook and crunch up a little bit. But you could achieve the same effect under the broiler for like two minutes. I just baked it at 350 for about half an hour. Came out perfect. We've got some crunch in there. So delicious. 
All right, the last meal is this creamy slow cooker chicken noodle casserole. I saw C. Mindy Mom make something similar. I didn't write it down. I, I just kind of went with what I had. <laughs> so I've got some chicken that I clearly forgot to thaw. Um, I'm throwing it in there. It's chicken thighs, bone in, skin on, which is fine in here because we're going to let it cook all day. It was a super busy day for me. I was not home. So I just put the chicken in there. I seasoned it with some video complete, some pepper, some thyme, and a little bit of lemon juice and let it go on high for about six to seven hours. And then I was able to just come in and pull that chicken out. Now it is dark meat chicken, but it is cooked all the way through and it is just falling apart. And I've got that beautiful, beautiful chicken broth down at the bottom now that we're going to work with, which is going to make this dish so flavorful. This is just a really fun take on um, like chicken noodle soup, really. So I've got some more celery, onions, carrots, and parsley. You can throw in whatever veggies. Again, I would highly recommend zucchini and squash. I like to throw those in my chicken noodle soup. I think they're fabulous. So whatever you want to throw in is great, but that's what I had on hand and what I was using up in my fridge this week. I also threw in some garlic because flavor. And then I went ahead and shredded up the chicken and tossed it all back in here. I actually reserved part of it for dog food. Um, I did not end up buying a rotisserie chicken this week, so I just saved half of it for dog food and the other half for this, which was still way more the chicken than I probably needed. I let the veggies and everything cook for about 20 minutes on the slow cooker and on high, and then I added a quarter cup of heavy cream. You could do milk if that's what you have. I just wanted this to have more of a creamy consistency. And then I've got these egg noodles. I ended up adding in about three quarters of the bag, but my personal recommendation would be to add the whole bag in because once they were cooked and I looked at the amount of chicken versus the noodles, I really could have thrown the whole bag in and it would have been fine. Um, make sure everything's stirred really well and then put the lid back on and the steam in there is going to help cook the noodles all the way through. And if you feel like your liquid is too loose, just do a cornstarch slurry to thicken it up. This was so good, so hearty, so delicious, and so perfect for fall. That is what I have this week, guys. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll be back on Tuesday with a grocery haul. There will be no third video this week, but I will be back next Saturday with another what's for dinner video. So I hope to see all of you there. Have a great one, guys. Bye.